Okay, so uh, let me tell you about the Hori buffer construction. So the starting point is a uh, funnel. Historic complete intersection X in F um, So the data for such a thing is um, a lattice L, a rank R lattice, a group homomorphism D from Z to the M to L, And uh, C vectors, L1, LC, in L. So, <clears throat> briefly, how you make a uh, toric complete intersection at this data. Uh, here, L uh, is a group of characters of a torus. Of a R-dimensional torus uh, to C star. So here, TR Is the torus spec D of L, the group algebra of L of the complex numbers? And D uh, can be interpreted dually, that's a bold L there, as a, a group homomorphism from TR. To C star to the M, and then encodes the representation on, well, you know, with C star to the M, you can act diagonally on CM. Okay? Uh, yeah, I mean L. So R means L is a rank R lattice. Uh, yeah. So, <clears throat> um, and so then the toric variety is going to be a geometric quotient of CM mod uh, T. And as I said, I'll tell you later uh, how how to take this quotient, okay? For today, just imagine that there's a way to take the quotient. And so Li's give Leiden bundles on L. Essentially because Li is, again, a character uh, of T.
So, for example, you can interpret the sections of Li on F. So, sorry, I abuse notation and call Li the corresponding line bundle. Then those are just the polynomials F in, um, you know, C, X1, XM, such that um, for every B in T, um, F of GA equals Li of G, F of A. Okay, so. <clears throat> and then X uh, is the vanishing locus of uh, general sections of these lambdas. So X is the variety of F, uh, F1 section, the variety of FC, where FI and gamma FLI are general sections. Okay, and we take this inside out. So, There are going to be some conditions on the data that ensure that X is a final orbifold. <clears throat> uh, so, by the way, Don, I decided that you're right. And so I'm gonna, just going to call these things orbifolds and not smooth orbifolds. You know, after all, I say manifold and I don't say smooth manifold. Is that your, the nature, the essential nature of your objection? No. No, okay. Uh, okay, I see, I see. Okay, so for me, <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we're happy for different reasons, but at least we're both happy. So I'm not going to spell these out, these conditions, because I don't know them, OK? This is an interesting problem in torque geometry, actually. Many special cases. So in fact, let me just mention right here, um, certainly in the orbifold case, we don't know how to enumerate Fano or before systematically by computer. We don't know enough about the matter to be able to do this. And in fact, we don't even know that in the manifold case under the appropriate level of generality. We know a lot more about, the manif about enumeration of complete intersection Fano manifolds in, to in toric in, in non in, in toric manifolds. We know a lot more about that problem, but we still don't know how to do it in the appropriate level of generality. Wait, Absolutely. No, because you say you know a lot if it's manifold. It's easier. It, it, no, 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 no. If it's a manifold, we know some good conditions. Uh oh, I'm not giving you the conditions, but, but there are some algorithms, and it's kind of, kind of clear what to do. Yeah. So that's what you can do. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> I, I will give some examples later in the course, uh, and the nature of the problem will become clearer, okay? 
Um, but let me just at least say the final condition. Um, yeah, perhaps I should say um, here, at least, let me just put a little, a little note here. Uh, so if I call di d of the ith basis element, okay, I will always at least assume this. that if I look at the cone spanned by the di's, so by definition, this is the cone sum r plus di inside L tensor r. I assume that this is a strict cone. In other words, it contains no straight lines. And that ensures that the toric variety F is proper, uh, projective, in fact. <clears throat> and so we know by the, so here's the key condition. Uh, so we know that by the adjunction formula that Kx is the canonical of F plus the sum of the Li restricted to uh, X, okay? And so uh, we will want that, uh, the, so, you know, one condition is that minus Kf minus sum of Li in other words, the minus k of f is the sum of the di's. Uh, maybe I should call these lj's. Minus the sum of the lj's. I want this to be in the ample cone of f. And I will talk about the ample cone of f later. Uh, when I do toric varieties in a bit more detail. That's also the cone of stability conditions that we'll discuss. And so if that thing is ample of F, then uh, it will follow that X is Fano, provided that it is an orbit. Okay, so in order to do the Horivafa construction, we need a further key assumption. Okay, so for every K in the set C, Sorry, I'm going to do square bracket C for this set of integers 1 up to C, okay? <clears throat> there exists a subset SK of C. And I want SK intersection SL to be empty when k is different from l. And then I want that my line bundle lk well, no, because I want that the line bundle lk be the sum uh, over i in sk of di. So, indeed, uh, if there are no line, they, they, this includes, uh, this discussion includes the case where there are no line bundles, and then in that case, there will be no S's, and we're just discussing the toric variety itself. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, so. Uh, no, because you see, uh, LK is just an element of L. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SK can only. Yes. No, no, no. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. You're right. This is no, no. You're absolutely right. Sorry, 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 sorry. For each K, these are subsets of M. M. Thank you very much. Very good. <laughs> okay. There is, a, there, uh, there is a tragedy in my written work, Don, that there are misprints everywhere. And uh, I, I, just, uh, I just don't know how to fix this problem. <laughs> so, <clears throat> uh, you know, this is a strange condition, and we'll discuss it a little bit. It is often believed that we know how to do mirror symmetry for a complete structures in toric variety. Nothing is further from the truth. Uh, we need this key assumption, all right? So um, to write the mirror, um, let's choose a basis of L. Okay, then your D is uh, now a matrix, D to Ji, and um, you take Y to be uh, given by these equations. I take product. Uh, X uh, I to the DJI. Uh, and this is uh, from J equal one to R. So I have R equations here, equal one, sorry. And I take some um, I in SK, X I equal one. And so this is K in C, so that's C more equations. And I take this thing inside uh, C to the M, in fact, C star to the M. And I take the function w from y to c to be defined uh, by the sum of uh, over i not in the union of the s case of x i. And this is the Horivaf mirror. Yes, uh, the DS is not a basis, it's not a basis, it's just a set of vectors. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. And it's D. Zero, one, yes. So if you didn't do that, let's say you were to do Yeah, yeah. I will uh, give an example today of something that does not satisfy the exchange and ask some questions to people about it. So, so you, you will, uh, we will come back to this. 
Yes. Yes. So may, let me make uh, some comments, maybe. Um, Okay, so what would be, well, I told you that this is the mirror, but what does that mean? So um, what's a mirror theorem? What, does, what, would, what, what should the mirror theorem say? So the mirror theorem should say, that the g hat of x equal the pi w uh, of um, you know pi the period of, of this thing y with the function w. Oh, let me put it like this of t. Okay, under some conditions and um, we don't we don't we don't know this. We know this in many cases, or in some cases. <clears throat> For example, the case where we know it is when x is smooth, x is a manifold, sorry, f is a manifold. The toric variety itself is, is smooth, and when all the line bundles are nef, Well, then in this case, we do it a theorem. <clears throat> Due to given tau. Uh, but, but, but not in the desired uh, generality. In fact, even when f is a manifold, it's not natural to assume that the Li's are in f. But that's maybe a wrinkle. Um, more importantly, when f is an orbifold, when x is an orbifold, then, uh, then really, Especially when X is an orbifold. Okay, and so let me just say the reason that we don't know much in the case when, in fact, know extremely little in when X is an orbifold, is that we uh, we understand very little. There's too many open problems in the Gromov-Witten theory of orbifolds. So we don't know how to handle this g hat function. There are some conjectures and blah, blah. But um, we know very little. Andrea there is an expert on, on this problem. OK. So let me nonetheless discuss an example. Um,
let's consider a cubic surface in P3. So P3 is an example of a toric variety, and then X3 is a toric complete intersection. Uh, so given tau, teaches us to do the following. So first we take the I function of x, and this is just this power series here, some 3D factorial. Uh, okay, maybe uh, before I even look at this, so, so what's the data uh, for this story completed section? Well, D will be a map from Z3 to Z, Z being my L now. And uh, L is just uh, the element 3 of Z. The line bundle of degree three. And D is the matrix one, one, sorry, Z4. We're in P3. One, one. Okay. So then using this data, then given till teaches us to do this, uh, the I function is this thing here. Um, three. So let, let me, uh, so three. Because we're looking at a cubic surface. So only if we're looking at the quartic, the clavier, and there we take four. Um, so l later in the course, towards the end, if I have time, I may teach you some of these things. Uh, for now, I'm just saying, where, the, where do these numbers come from? So, well. The, the, the 3D is uh, this 3 here. Uh, and the D to the 4 is because I have four ones. Okay. And so note that this thing here is 1 plus 6T plus OT squared. Okay. And then given till tells us that the G function, G x of t is e to the minus 60 times i. Um, sorry, let me just write, instead of 6, I write c, some constant c, and then c equals 6 is uniquely determined such that uh, to ensure that then g of t is 1 plus t squared plus big plus, uh, sorry, 1 plus big O of t squared. Okay. <clears throat> so we know what the g function is. And then... Uh, Rivafa gives us, uh, tells us, you know, follow the instructions written there. Uh, yes, of course, because the graph Witten invariants are deformation independent, they, they, don't, they don't, they are deformation invariants. <clears throat> so, why we're supposed to take. Uh, well, you know, the variables for P3, I call them x naught, x1, x2, and x3. Um, and so I have x naught, x1, x2, x3 equal 1. And then x1 plus x2 plus x3 
equal 1. So here I take S to be the set 1, 2, and 3. And so these, these last three ones, and so that three there is the sum of these three ones. And W is the function X naught from Y to C. So I want to briefly demonstrate that the period for this thing is indeed what you want it to be. And so that the thing works in this case. And uh, so I prefer to reparameterize this thing as, as, a, as a torus and the function w as a Laurent polynomial. y as a torus, c star squared, and w a Laurent polynomial. So uh, I do this. I write, um, well, see, I solve for x naught. And so now I eliminate x0, so y is just x1 plus x2 plus x3. Yeah, so this, this y here lives in um, c star to the 4 as written. And then now I look at some of 3 equal 1 inside c star cube. And uh, then on y, the function is uh, 1 over. Uh, x1, x2, x3. <clears throat> so then I parameterize y by a torus c star squared with coordinate x and y by declaring that x1 equal 1 over 1 plus x plus y x2 equal x over 1 plus x plus y, and x3 equal y over 1 plus x plus y. <clears throat> so x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal 1. And then, then I work with y equals c star squared, and w equal um, 1 over x1, x2, x3, which uh, then comes out as 1 plus x plus y cubed over uh, x times y. Yes, uh, you are right, you are right. It's a, it's a subset, Y is a subset, absolutely, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, that uh, 1 plus x plus y is, yeah. <laughs> Neither is technically a subset of the other, I suppose.
These are all in C cross yeah. by definition. Yes, yes. And so So let me sort of picture um, this Laurent polynomial. Um, so these are dots in uh, Z2. Z2 is the space of monomials in X and Y. And I uh, put a cross here where, uh, where I put the constant monomial. And uh, so this, this is the Newton polygon of uh, W. And now I'm going to write the coefficients of each of the dots. And there's a six there in the middle. And here you can see that um, the period of W they uh, define as um, uh, yesterday one over integral one over one minus T W integrating along omega equals indeed. Uh, the I function okay and both satisfy this differential equation here uh, d squared minus 3t uh, 3D plus 1, 3D plus 2 <clears throat> equals 0. And it is absolutely right. Why not? Yes? Sorry, sorry, right, 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 right. I had. Where I put an additional de factorial here. Correct. And the thing that does correspond to the G is uh, W minus 6. So uh, let me call it W prime. All you have to do is to shift it by 6, OK? W prime for W minus 6 um, gives uh, pi W prime of t equal g hat of t. And I don't want to write the differential equation for that because it isn't as nice. But it's no longer a uh, hypergeometric dif differential equation. Sorry? What 
There is something here, you know, I don't know. It's, um, it's a curious thing, okay? But in some sense, a shift by a constant is not a very important, it's not a very fundamental obstacle to do these things. Okay. Yes. And so what I'm saying is that the Horivafa pr procedure does not give me the perfect thing that I want. Yes. Right, right. <clears throat> so this, this process here is, in fact, you know, one could say a bit more, is the mirror map. And uh, there is a mirror map both on this side here and on that side there somehow. And it's somehow the same mirror map. I don't know what that means. Okay, so let's forget for the moment uh, uh, Horivafa. I just wanted to give you a construction of mirror symmetry that we will elaborate on during the course. Um, and uh, so I want to finish this bit of contextualization here. Uh, so I want to tell you what we are about, what we are trying to do, we being myself and my collaborators, Al, and so on. And, sorry? I can't hear you. No, I'm doing the cubic. I'm not doing the quartic. I'm doing the cubic stuff. And what we're going to try to tell you. Try to tell you. OK? So we understand that mirror symmetry is about toric degenerations. Okay, so that's something to take home from uh, Gross Siebert and uh, you know lots of other people. Um, and so let me just give you a couple of definitions, uh, just to uh, allow me to, to to discuss this. So. A final polytub is a lattice polytub P in some Z to the N, okay, uh, such that uh, we are going to ask that the origin of Z to the N is strictly in the interior of P. So, sorry, uh, it's a polytope in Rn, okay? And being a lattice polytope means that the vertices of P are in Zn. 
And two, I want that the vertices of P are primitive vectors. In Z A. So, um, so you know, to give a final polytope, is the same thing as to give a toric funnel variety. And uh, not smooth. OK? And so if I know polyta P uh, gives me the toric final variety, which I'm going to note by X sub P, and this is the, the toric variety with fan, the spanning fan. of P. And so, don't worry too much about this. If you don't know about torque varieties, this is something that I'm going to tell you more about. Um, let's just think about the data set here. It's a lattice polytope. So in fact, this Rn, I always think of it if in the torque geometry setting as N tensor R. where n is uh, that n. So then I'm going to say that a final orbifold X is class TG. And so TG means toric. generalization if um, there exists a QG degeneration of X to a toric final X sub P. Okay? So here QG stands for Q Gorenstein degeneration, and that's you know a technical condition that means that the degeneration is nice, and I'm not sure I'm ever gonna talk about it in this course, but you know, in, there's a nice degeneration to a dark grind. And so, you know, the idea is that this is the correct class of things for which it makes sense to look for a mirror. And so, mirror symmetry starts by choosing a polyton P. And uh, 
And uh, then it talks about, it relates, it, the mirror symmetry works for uh, deformations, if you like, more precisely, perhaps deformation families of XP. These being mirror to Lorad polynomials, certain Lorad polynomials, F with newt F equal P. <clears throat> okay? And so, here's some of the questions that uh, we want to address in the longer term, for the longer term. So, for example, given P, understand deformation of XP to orbifolds. And question two, um, given P1 and P2, two polytopes, when do XP1 and XP2 have deformations in common? Some deformations in common. These are hard questions in algebraic geometry uh, about which we don't know a lot, okay? <clears throat> we are working on. And you know, then ideally at the end of a long time, we will have some result that says something like this. Uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, literally, between um, UG families. of class TG, in other words, the whole deformation family of Fano orbifolds of class TG. And this is going to be in one-to-one -one correspondence with a certain Fano polytopes. P, those for which XP admit a deformation to a, an orbifold. And then I have to identify those P that have deformations in common. And so let me just call this mutation. And then that. In fact, then there's another one-to-one -one correspondence between a certain Laurent polynomials f with nu to f equal p all 
also up to mutation. Well, I don't need to call the new to f equal to this. Certainly, around polynomials mod mutation. So this is what we hope to do in the very long term. Sorry? We don't know that. Sorry? So let me come to that in a moment, okay? So, um, in this course, um, we give some, we will tell you a combinatorial recipe. So this is in the paper called uh, Loran Inversion. By uh, Al Kaspchik. I don't know who all the authors are. There is Tom Coates. There is also Thomas Prince and maybe some other people. I'm not sure. Al? That's it. OK, very good. So this is on the archive. So it's a computer recipe. You start from a polytope, and then uh, there will be some combinatorial games to be played on this polytope. And uh, when they work, uh, there is not going to always, always be possible to do it, they will produce both a deformation of XP as a complete intersection, as a toric complete intersection. And also, we'll give some Laurent polynomials that are the mirror, the landau gizmo mirror of that family. Um, the serious uh, thing to do is to do this program inside the grass zebras machine, which we're working on. But I'm not telling you about that. Instead, I will just tell you this particular combinatorial recipe that in practice works in a lot of cases, sometimes in the majority of cases. And it allows to make long lists of final G pairs. So that's what we're going to try to tell you. To conclude, I just want to give you an example. So consider a toric complete intersection x66 in P. Weighted projective space, this is really simple, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. This is a very nice orbifold. It's a surface. It has... Um, Four singularities, four quotient singularity of the form of third one one. It's final. Minus k of x is O one. And um, it has degree k squared equal a quarter, a, a third. Six times six, yeah, a third. Very nice orbit. The I function of x, if you follow your nose, you follow given till, uh, you will write 
uh, some 6D factorial squared over uh, 2D factorial squared and then 3D factorial cube, T to the D. Okay, so this happens to be 1 plus 600 T plus O T squared. So if you want the G, then you're supposed to take E to the minus 600 T times I. Then anyway, it's a harmless uh, operation. And um, uh, You know, uh, so this indeed has to do with the orbifold gram of Witten theory of X. Okay, though in a slightly subtle way, and you want to ask explanation, you can ask Andrea, he can tell you, um, about that. And this does not satisfy the condition of Horivafa. So we cannot make a Horivafa mirror of this thing. And um, yeah, perhaps um, I should um, try to wrap this up. We cannot make a Horivafa mirror of this. Uh, but we know that the mirror exists. Um, G hat, or perhaps I should also say one thing. It, does not have a toric degeneration. It's a theorem. It's obvious because minus k is empty. But g, g hat, i hat, if you like, are of geometric origin. Because they satisfy a hypergeometric differential equation, and we know by Nick Katz that hypergeome all hypergeometric differential equations are of geometric origin. And therefore, a mirror exists somewhere, even in the, in the low-level sense, even though I cannot write down one explicitly for you. Yes, but as we learned from the example of the cubic, that type of shift just means that if I find one for i hat, I just shift it by a constant. Ooh. Something. Something. Yes. Indeed, it will not be. It will not be Laurent It's a. It's a. It's a I, I agree. I agree. Well, you know, I don't know because if I. Yeah, so, you know, perhaps. If, if it were, it's a function. I certainly can subtract a constant. Perhaps I'm not 100%. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. I take the point. It's okay. It's okay. I want to, I don't know. This is a question to everybody to, to come and discuss this matter with me if you, if you want. Sorry.